South Carolina's football team began spring practice on Tuesday morning, and the feeling is just a little bit different than it's been in years past. You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Gamecock Nation, and welcome back to the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. I'm Angeline, the host of this podcast, and you can find my written work, as always, over on Gamecock Digest on Fan Nation. Thank you all so much for making the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your first listen or watch for your team here today. We are free and available both on YouTube and wherever you get your audio podcasts daily. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as new customers can join today and get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. We got a lot we're going to dive into on this Tuesday edition of Locked On Gamecocks. At the end of the show, we're going to talk a little bit about Lamont Paris and the men's basketball team getting a unique opportunity for some coverage that not every team in March Madness is going to get. We'll touch on the impacts of all of that, but we're going to touch on spring practice to start this show. Shane Beamer and the football team took the field for their first spring practice earlier this morning. I was fortunate enough to be able to go out there and watch them in their first six periods of practice. And look, they're in jerseys and shorts right now. There was no hitting drills going on or anything of that sort. And so there's not really a whole lot of takeaways that you can have in that kind of setting. But there are some things that you can't talk about. The first thing that I want to talk about is the feeling surrounding the team. It was just the first day of practice, but y'all, I'm going to be honest. I just got a feeling that the mentality in this program is a little bit different heading into this offseason and going into this next football season. Here's what I mean by that. South Carolina, ever since Shane Beamer got to Columbia, they have never been short on energy. Obviously, Shane Beamer is a guy that really uses positive energy to fuel himself, and he tries to impart that on his coaches and also his players. He does that to keep everybody's spirits up, and obviously, it's a great way to lead an organization, or in this case, a football program. But after you go five and seven in your third season and you miss out on a bowl game, which looking back, you probably feel like should not have happened, it's a little bit more difficult to keep that same positive energy approach. And so this offseason, look, we've talked about this plenty of times now. South Carolina has made several changes to this coaching staff. Sean Elliott is back in Columbia coaching the tight ends and also serving as the run game coordinator in title. They brought in a former NFL wide receiver and a Division II head football coach at Limestone and Mike Furry, who I think is going to really help that wide receiver room in terms of development. They brought in Markwell Blackwell, who originally – I believe is out of South Florida. At least he went and played college football at South Florida. But the past couple of years, he was a running backs coach at AM in 2023. The year prior, he was at Ole Miss. And of course, Joe D. Camillus, the new special teams coordinator, pretty much comes from a longtime NFL background. The thing I talked about with all these guys is they are prototypical ball coaches. That's not to say that, you know, they're very standoffish and you can't ever have a conversation with them. But those guys just want to be able to coach ball. And bringing in that kind of coach, I think, was good for Shane Beamer because, listen, we have to be upfront about this. 2024 is a pivotal year for this football program. And Shane Beamer especially. You cannot have two losing seasons in a row. The conference is going to change drastically starting next fall with Texas and Oklahoma joining the fold, which will already make what is a very difficult schedule even more difficult now on top of that. You can't take the same approach that you've had the last three years that just led you going five and seven and not make some sort of adjustment. So where I'm going with all that is this. I'm not saying that that means that there's no longer going to be any fun had in that building. 
I'm not saying that, you know, before this spring practice, the last two springs, the team just did nothing but goof off the whole time they were out there on the football field. I promise you that was not the case. But it does seem like that in terms of being intentional with every little thing that you do and having a purpose, that is going to be emphasized to an even higher degree now with this new coaching staff. And if you're not trying to raise your standard or you're not living up to the standard that they have set for you, then um, they're going to call you on it. And I kind of noticed that with all the coaches that I saw, especially on the offensive practice field on Tuesday morning. So I know to some of y'all, it might sound like a bunch of jargon. At the end of the day, you're going to sit there and say, well, I don't care unless it produces wins. Fine. I understand that feeling. But I do believe that the mentality and the mindset of this program has changed from this past November, the last season of the sort of first regime that Shane Beamer had here for the most part to this new group, especially on the offensive side of the ball that he has in terms of his staff in 2024. So that was the first thing that stuck out to me this morning. A couple other things. Uh, let's talk about quarterback real quick. Y'all should not be surprised about this. Lenore Sellers was the first quarterback taking reps in individual drills and also the one team drill that we saw. I swear to y'all, they threw the whole offense out there. We had no idea it was coming. And I think half of the media members there were completely caught off guard. I was one of them that was caught off guard. So I apologize for that. I should have been able to get the whole offensive lineup, at least in a photo or video. And I wasn't able to. But Lenore Sellers, he was the starter going out there. Robbie Ashford was quarterback number two. Behind him was Davis Bevel, the transfer from Oklahoma. And then Dante Reno, the incoming true freshman out of the Northeast, obviously. His father being the head coach at Yale. Still think that he has a ton of potential as long as he gets some time to grow in this offensive system. He was quarterback number four, which makes sense because he is the young buck out of the entire group. So those were your four quarterbacks on Tuesday morning. Also, the offensive line. Paid specific attention to those guys in terms of individual work. Lonnie Teasley, obviously, just like Shane Beamer, always bringing energy to those drills. Uh, but the first group that I saw out there was Ja'Kai Moore at left tackle, Marky Anderson at left guard, who, by the way, I'll talk about more in a little bit. For Sean Lee at center, right guard was Trevon Baugh, and right tackle was Kaysen Henry. Good sign on that note because Henry obviously dealt with really bad injury luck this past fall. They desperately need him to stay healthy this offseason going to next year because Kaysen Henry has the potential to be a solid starter at that spot. But, of course, you know, if you're injured, then you're not going to be able to do anything for the offense. So the one notable omission in that regard is Tree Babalade. Listen, don't know if there's anything going on there right now. It could be a bevy of little things. He could be a bit dinged up. You know, he could have been late to a meeting. Not saying he was, but he could have been late to a meeting, maybe leading into spring practice starting. And Lonnie decided to send him a message and say, I'm going to have you take second team reps on our first practice because you need to know that's not okay. There could be plenty of reasons why a guy like Tree Babalade is not in that first group. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. Don't read too deep into that, but obviously if it remains that way throughout all spring practice, then that'll be something to monitor heading into the summertime and fall camp. Last thing I want to say in terms of who physically looked great off the hoof, I would say that group on Tuesday morning for me was the linebacker group. I got to see a lot of those guys on the back line when they were doing warmups and stretches before practice officially started. And I saw Demetrius Knight and Jerron Willis, those two guys look phenomenal. Demetrius Knight, listen, you would not be able to tell me that he came from Charlotte. He looks like a power four starting linebacker. And then Jerron Willis, in my opinion, he looks like he's also added some good weight to his frame as well. So Willis could be ready for a bigger role in 2024. And Knight, listen, it would not surprise me if he was a starter for this team this upcoming fall. I think he's got that kind of potential. But obviously, again, Everyone can look like a Super Bowl champion in jerseys and shorts. So we'll see if that remains to be the case as the pads come on. And then eventually you see full contact tackling to the ground a couple practices this spring. We'll see if that remains the case as the next few weeks progress. So those are my initial observations from spring practice on Tuesday morning. And I think that this is an important time period of the offseason for a couple of 
certain players at different positions, guys that I think need to step up for one reason or another. I'll talk about those three guys in just a couple moments right here on Locked On Gamecocks. Today's show is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports from March Madness, the NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. Today's show and this week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Duquesne Dukes are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. This team has absolutely surprised all of us with their powerful performances this season, leading to them making their first NCAA tournament appearance since 1977. It's only been seven years for South Carolina. It has literally been 47 years for the Duquesne Dukes. They say, win life, go rogue. And that's exactly what the Dukes have done here. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Welcome back to this live edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your South Carolina Gamecocks every single day. The Locked On College Basketball Bracket Breakdown Show is now available on the Locked On College Basketball Podcast, where experts Andy Patton and Isaac Shade break down their brackets and discuss everything that you need to know about filling out a winning bracket and prepare you for this year's NCAA tournament. Find the Locked On Bracket Breakdown now on the Locked On College Basketball Podcast, wherever you you get your audio podcast daily. All right. So taking a big picture look at spring practice for South Carolina's football team, I think that there are three particular players that have got to take a step forward in terms of their development this offseason. The first player that sticks out to me, it's at the wide receiver position. And you might be thinking, Nick Harbour. That is not my answer here. I think the wide receiver that needs to take a step forward in spring practice at this spot is Elijah Caldwell. Now, if you recall Elijah Caldwell signing out of high school, Northwestern High School, I believe, up in Rock Hill, South Carolina, Caldwell was a guy that made an impact in the short and deep areas of the field for the Trojans, specifically in terms of making acrobatic catches. This is a guy that's got great spatial awareness, always seems to know where the sideline is relative to his own position on the field, can contort his body and give himself a great chance to make a catch pretty much wherever the ball is thrown in his vicinity. And the thing is, this past preseason camp, there was a lot of buzz surrounding Elijah Caldwell and what he had done in practice to that point. And one of the guys that was sort of Championing him in media gatherings was Spencer Rattler, the starting quarterback for South Carolina. But unfortunately, due to what is rumored to have been an injury, Caldwell was never able to showcase his skill set this past fall. But I think that with the personnel that this wide receiver group has right now, and basically it's a lot of guys that are of smaller stature who are going to make a bigger impact in the short and intermediate areas of the field, but in my opinion, not really deep down the field. Those guys I'm talking about, of course, 
are Gage Larvidane, Amari Bruce Huggins, Jared Brown, also Amazio Bennett, a high school enrollee there. Um, and so you might say Nick Carver can fill that void in terms of needing a downfield threat in this passing attack. But I still don't think Nick Harbour is ready yet. And look, he's going through track right now, which is commendable because he's trying to balance his time between both sports. And he's done quite well on the track, by the way, over the past couple of months. But with him not being there 100% of the time right now, you need someone else in that room to step up in that kind of role. And I think Elijah Caldwell is the guy that could very well do that. So he's the first guy, in my opinion, that's got to step up for this football team in spring practice. The second guy, one I already talked about earlier, Marquis Anderson. Now, it's not Marquis Anderson's fault for the reason why he has to develop in this spring practice setting this offseason. Last football season, unfortunately, was taken away from him because he had to go through surgery on one of his knees, tried to fight through the first couple of weeks, but they eventually just got to the point where they said, it's not worth it. It's too risky for your position. We're going to shut you down. We're going to have you have an operation and just try to come back stronger this spring. It appears that Marky Anderson Jr., excuse me, not Jr., Marky Anderson has bounced back in a big way here. He was, again, the starting left guard for the offensive line and the few position-specific drills that we were able to watch in practice on Tuesday morning. And this one's pretty obvious also in terms of a group standpoint. The offensive line was the worst position on this team in 2023. You can't slice it any other way. They have got to improve at this spot. And obviously, a lot of fans, for good reason, are very excited about the young talent in this group. It started in the 2023 class with him, Tri Babalade, and Trevon Ba. The 2024 class, obviously, is also carrying that kind of mantle with Blake Franks, a Cam Pringle, and a Josiah Thompson. I think Marquis Anderson, he was the most college-ready offensive lineman out of this 2023 class, in my humble opinion. And that... Having an injury, a knee injury specifically, just took away his freshman season. So with him being healthy now, it looks like, I think he's going to help out this position group in a big way on the interior. And then you pair him up alongside a veteran in Vershawn Lee, who's played now five, six years of college football. I think that's going to help him develop even faster heading into this next season. The last guy that I think has got to take a step forward in spring practice for the Gamecocks is cornerback Judge Collier. This one is also pretty obvious from a position standpoint. The cornerback two spot right now is completely wide open. Obviously, O'Donnell Fortune comes back for one more year here in Columbia. He is going to be your starter at this cornerback one spot. But with Marcel's dial now being gone and moving on to the NFL, you got to find a second corner to step up in that defensive backfield. So is that going to be a Judge Collier? Could it be an Emery Floyd? Could it be a Jalewis Solomon? Could it be, say, a Vakari Swain? It could be any of those guys, okay? So Collier might not even be the starter, but in terms of a guy that I think is situated the best out of that entire group right now at this very moment, I think it's Judge Collier because – he was one of the bigger surprises from the 2023 recruiting class this past football season. He played a ton of snaps. I believe he started a game or two for this team as well. And sure, it wasn't always the best when he was out there on the field, but that's to be expected, at, especially at a spot like cornerback, going up against SEC-level athletes at the wide receiver position and in terms of coaching and play calling. I think Judge Carter's got a lot of potential. He played both ways in high school, wide receiver and cornerback. So that gives him a leg up in terms of anticipating what wideouts are going to do relative to his teammates at that spot. And also, you just look at Judge Collier. The first thing that sticks out to you is his wingspan. I mean, literally, you see my arms here. He could probably dang near touch the window in this room and the closet door all the way over here to my right. He's got that wide of a wingspan. Think of a Jamarcus King from the early Will Muschamp years, but a little bit more athletic and not having to always recover from being behind on a route. I think Judge Collier's got that kind of potential, but he's got to make it count. He's got to make it happen in spring ball because obviously, again, he won't be the only guy competing for starting time at that spot. So Elijah Caldwell, Marquis Anderson, and Judge Collier, I think you are three guys that have to take a step forward 
this spring for this football team, both in terms of your own roles and also what the position group might need from you this upcoming football season. Now, there was some exciting news that came out on Monday regarding the men's basketball team, as obviously they've gotten a lot of good coverage from, say, the SEC Network with the ride that they have had this season, this winter, all the things that they have done. But the NCAA is prepared to give them even more coverage than what they've gotten to this point, more coverage than a lot of blue bloods that this sport has. We'll discuss what I'm talking about there in just a couple moments right here on Locked On Gamecocks. This show is also brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed going all the way, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Now, for this specific bet, this is just, you know, what if South Carolina makes it to the Sweet 16? FanDuel's got that set up as a yes or no prop bet, and right now, the no's are the favorite. South Carolina making the Sweet 16, the prop bet right now is listed at plus 360. And I get it. Oregon's going to be tough offensively. Creighton, if they meet up with them, is going to be a very tough challenge as well. But I think South Carolina can win two games this weekend and make it to the second weekend. So if you think they could do that as well, this might be a good prop bet to put some money on. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Welcome back to today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your team every single day in just 30 minutes. Lamont Paris and South Carolina's men's basketball team will be participating in a series called NCAA March Madness Confidential. So what exactly does that mean? It basically means that they're going to get a bit more coverage than a lot of other teams that are in the bracket. They're going to have more behind-the-scenes footage of what the team's going through, maybe what they're doing in their off time, in between games, off the court, what Lamont Paris and his staff are doing to prepare for these upcoming matchups. It's going to be really cool for Gamecock fans to watch, and I also think that this is going to be a great opportunity for Lamont Paris and this program to get positive exposure from a national standpoint because think about it it won't just be south carolina fans that will be watching that kind of stuff college basketball junkies all over the place are going to be ingesting this content over the next few days now some of the other teams that will be participating in this confidential series will be tennessee marquette northwestern boise state and i want to say uconn is a sixth team that will also be involved here as well. So pretty good company from a pure men's college basketball standpoint in terms of the teams that are participating in this. But with, with exposure that you get brings attention, with attention brings more recruits and potentially guys in the transfer portal. I heavily debated talking about transfer portal targets for South Carolina already this week, but I've decided that especially in terms of not jinxing the basketball team, I will not be discussing that in depth until the season officially ends, whenever it ends over the next few weeks. But just know this, there are already over 250 kids that have entered the transfer portal. By the way, it's a crying shame that it's taking place this week or it opened this week. It shouldn't be starting until a few weeks from now, but that's another story. The point is, they're going to be watching a lot of these teams that are in the tournament teams that are mid-major teams, high major teams that they think they can make an impact for. And South Carolina being on this kind of stage, getting this kind of access and giving this kind of insight into what all they do on the court and off the court, that's going to be a recruiting pitch in and of itself for Lamont Paris and this staff. And I know some Gamecock fans have been a bit antsy so far because they see some of these posts from like a Joe Tipton from on three sports and other guys that are saying, you know, this prospect has heard from over two dozen schools and none of them are South Carolina and about five or six of them are either sec schools 
or ACC schools that are sort of more geographically closer to South Carolina. But that's okay because obviously right now, look, a lot of those schools, look at it this way, they're not playing in a postseason tournament. They're not playing in the NCAA tournament. So Arkansas and Ole Miss and other teams like that, they got more time on their hands because of that. Lamont Paris and his staff, obviously they should prioritize preparing for this first round game against Oregon and potentially another game against either Creighton or Akron in the second round if they're fortunate enough to make it to that round, of course. But to be a part of this behind-the-scenes coverage for the NCAA tournament, it's a big deal for this program. Think about that. This team just won 11 games last year. They've done everything they've done to this point this season. And now the NCAA is saying, we want to give more coverage on your team, your program, your coaches, your players. This program has got a great opportunity to continue to climb the mantle in terms of the college basketball hierarchy. If you build it, they will come. That doesn't just mean fan support or dollars being spent. It also means media coverage. And South Carolina is earning every bit of that this March. So great opportunity for Lamont Paris and the Gamecocks. We'll see what all they are doing when they are off the court once those episodes start to roll out. And obviously, you could check out NCAA March Madness on socials, on X, on Facebook, and I'm sure a bunch of other channels as well. With that being said, that's going to do it for today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. I hope y'all thoroughly enjoyed today's show as always. What are your thoughts on spring practice getting underway? Which players do you think need to step up for this team in spring practice? And what are your thoughts on Lamont Paris, the men's basketball team, getting some extra coverage in the NCAA tournament? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section if you watch today's show on YouTube or you can shoot me a direct message on X at a line underscore SC if you listen to today's show on an audio podcast app. Once again, thank you all so much for tuning in. Have a great rest of your Tuesday and I'll be sure to catch you all on the next show of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast.